everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now today I have a very interesting story to share with you guys and as you've probably seen from the thumbnail and title of this video it relates to this gold bar and the fact that it has failed its assay test at the Edinburgh Assay Office. Now I've basically dropped the ball here uh, in some of the practices and methods by which I've used to create this bar and I wanted to share the experiences that I've had about this whole process about it failing its assay test why it failed and the implications that it's got for me as a pourer and a business and for the customer who purchased this bar. I think it's really important to share the negatives in life generally but also here on this channel about my hand poured silver. I'm guilty somewhat of not showing a lot of those negatives that happen just in the day to day of pouring silver. You know, for every wonderful piece that I share in a silver pouring compilation, there could be five which have come out not looking very pretty. But you don't see those and you don't really talk about those. They just go back in the furnace, they get melted and away you go. So I think it's important and cathartic almost for me to be able to talk about this, share it with you guys so that you know that it's not all roses and puppy dogs here in the backyard bullion household. There are things that go wrong and it's important for us to share those with you and also you can maybe learn from our mistakes and avoid these kind of things happening in the future. So if you've not already seen the gold pouring video I'll put a link down in the description to it where you can go and see this gold bar being made and it started out life as this gold casting grain which we sourced from the European mint to make it. This is another batch which is interesting which we'll talk about the future of that batch and, and what we might end up or not end up doing with it as well. And we poured a gold bar and I had a few issues pouring the gold bar into a different mold it wasn't quite taking and uh, eventually we changed mold and we used the same mold that we've been using for the one ounce silver forum bars and we got this fantastic looking gold coin out uh, sorry gold coin gold bar out now we sent the gold bar this wonderful thing and I absolutely love this I will be sad to see it go when it finally gets shipped off uh, to the customer but we sent this up to the Edinburgh assay office for assay testing and hallmarking. Now if you are not familiar with hallmarking it is essentially the process of testing the metal to make sure it is indeed what I say it is and here you can see the marks which should have gone on this bar but they are not, well not exactly these marks because they're slightly different but um, the point is this failed this one passed when it went up there. You can see here the maker's mark that said it's made by me. The 999 is the most important one there. The assay office has tested this bar and they are confident with a 100% degree of confidence that this is a 999 silver bar. And they've put that 999 on, they've put the castle mark, which is their mark, and the year date to say it was done in 2019. So that's great. That's what we wanted to achieve with this gold bar and have a hallmark put on it so that the buyer and potentially any buyers of this bar in the future would know without a shadow of a doubt that it is indeed pure gold. 24 karat or 999 gold. Let me see if we can get this back in focus. Come on. There we go. So we sent it up and in their setup they've got there they have very 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 good equipment and when I was up there on a visit a while back I got to talking with them about gold because it was on my radar to try and do some gold pouring at some point and it's a different testing process to silver, a different chemical testing process. Now we didn't even get to that stage where they would drill a hole into this bar and we talked all about where and how they would go into this bar and drill it and you know it would be done sensitively and then repaired and we even bought some 24 karat gold wire to send up for them to repair the bar so you know all the provisions were put in place but it didn't even get that far because sadly this bar failed the tests when they were using uh, some very sensitive equipment to look at the surface of the bar and they found specks of silver and that was an immediate fail of the assay testing which is a real shame and I you know I want to take this opportunity to really apologize once again to the customer of this bar because I know you were really looking forward to having that first hallmarked piece of gold by me by Backyard Bullion and to let you down like that especially when you've put your faith in me and us and our business and everything that we're doing here so much uh, to you know, put this huge piece of value in this gold bar is you know it, it's sad for us and we were rightly disappointed and I know you were rightly disappointed too so our apologies on that side of things so it failed its assay tests and when I got the news I was really deflated I got the phone call from Edinburgh to say that it had failed the specks of silver on the surface 
Now, you can't see them, obviously. They're microscopic specks of silver, but the equipment that they use is so sensitive, and rightly so, because it's really important that they get this right, and they get it right every time. So, yeah, it's failed. And then it got me thinking, oh, well, how's this happened? Where has it happened? I thought I'd taken precautions to you know, get rid of the silver on the workbench, use a fresh crucible and everything, and apparently that wasn't good enough. They did say it's, you know, relatively, it's not common, but it's it's something that maybe first-time hobbyists will encounter if you use the same equipment. I thought I'd, I say, sterilised it as best as possible, you know, using new, new pieces of equipment, new crucibles and things like that. But ultimately, there's still residual, uh, you know, elemental silver at sort of that microscopic level, either in, in and around the work area, on the work surfaces. It could have even come uh, out of the same mould that we ultimately use for the one-ounce silver forum bars. So, you know, there's, there's, you know, issues around that there, which I think are, you know, quite difficult for me to control and manage in my own setup, working from my kitchen table, basically. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's definite lessons to be learned there about having completely separate work areas. But it's also got me thinking, because, you know, ultimately, one of the things which I think has contributed most to this failure, and you can see a prime example of it here on this silver bar. So when we pour with the graphite crucibles, there is a little bit of graphite pollution which comes out on some of the bars. And you can see here, it's here, this, this kind of gumph, as I call it, on the bar. And the way that I clean that off is I use a very fine piece of sandpaper. This is a very old piece here with a hole in it, but it's P7000 sandpaper, or ST7000, so it's a very fine sandpaper. And you put a dab of vinegar on the sandpaper and then you rub on top of the bar and it takes away the graphite quite nicely. When the gold bar came out, there was a little bit of graphite on it and I kind of just instinctively reached for that piece of sandpaper and I used it and thought, fantastic, it's done. And therein lies the problem because it's sandpaper at the end of the day. So when, of course, you're using the sandpaper on a piece of silver, it's going to extract bits of silver or gold off the bar and onto the sandpaper and then transferred it onto the gold bar. So there could have been a number of different areas that have contaminated this gold bar. I think the sandpaper element is probably the most likely part where it has, uh, you know, contaminated this bar. So that's kind of the, the ultimate... I think failing point here of just, uh, I guess that naivety of my not even thinking about the fact that it's sandpaper and of course, of course it's sandpaper, it's going to take some silver off and then in the future when you use it for something else it could transfer it on there, of course it does, you think about it now, hindsight is a wonderful thing. But in that moment I was of course just doing it and doing it in the way that I've done it for all of the countless silver bars which I've produced over this time, so yeah, that's most likely where the contamination has come. Now, of course, the Edinburgh office didn't drill this, so they can't say whether the contamination is throughout the bar. They did say uh, from, of course, their initial tests that there's surface contamination in spots, and of course, that's you know ultimately led to the failure of this bar. Any small surface contaminations will ultimately fail this kind of sensitive piece of uh, you know equipment. So, yeah, definite issues there. Now, of course, this has some um, big issues for the customer. You know, we are not going to be able to hallmark this bar. There's also questions about, really, whether or not I should mark it myself as 999 gold, because ultimately it has failed an assay test. So me putting 999 on it or 24 carat on it is, you know, questionable, I think. And I would always err on the side of caution and that side of things. I don't want to, uh, you know, break any laws or legislations around hallmarking or selling precious metals. Ultimately, though, this is just a bullion bar, so legally speaking, it doesn't actually require a hallmark. So I can, I suppose, do what I like with it, but again, it's about the ethical points of whether or not I should do that. Um, so, you know, from my perspective, I think just kind of leaving it as is, is probably the best course of action. You know, I, I have no doubt that it is, you know, as close to 999 gold as it can be. You know, the gold that we source from the European Mint is... You know, it's very high quality. Uh, it's sourced from actually the Canadian mint of all places, which is very interesting to know. Um, but again, it's about that full transparency. It's failed an assay test. It's got a story to it now, this bar as well, and I think that's really important to see. So that's the nuts and bolts of it. I've learned an awful lot from this situation. Uh, you know, in terms of future gold pouring, I think I'm dubious about doing more uh, simply for the fact that I don't want to risk contaminating my silver workspace with gold and having silver items fail a hallmark. 
uh, or fail an assay test. Failing an assay test is a fairly big deal as well, by the way. You know, from my perspective now, when I send things into uh, the Edinburgh Assay Office, I have that black mark on my record. Of course, I've got a lot of good positive marks on my record as well from sending in countless numbers of silver bars over this last two and a half years that we've been assay testing. But ultimately, a bad mark on there is a bad mark, and it will mean perhaps that I have ground to claw back in terms of that good standing and reputation with the Assay Office, and I completely acknowledge that and, and agree with that. Uh, and to be angry and annoyed about that is fine, and I was quite deflated about it actually when it first happened. But ultimately this is part of life, part of dealing with things is really, you know, it's important to process things in the right way and deal with things in the right way. And this is one of the ways that I deal with these type of things, by sharing it with you guys, sharing that disappointment with me. I was really gutted when we got the news about this gold bar. You know, it's, it is sad, it is sad to not be able to have that hallmark put on there. But at some point in the future, we will have a hallmarked piece of gold. I don't know when that will be. All I know is that in the current setup that we've got right now, it's going to be very difficult to, to do. Of course, we've got here a you know preserved piece of sterilised gold, I suppose you could call it. It's not contaminated. It's not been taken out of these bags. So it's safe. It's, we know that's, that's pure. So if we can get a pure workspace, maybe, maybe we'll do some more gold in the future. But for the time being, this will just be retained as that kind of cheap stock to uh, to maybe pass on when gold price goes to the right direction. But who knows? Only time will tell. So that's my story on this gold bar and the sadness that is it failing its assay test. I would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this story and also anything that you've got from a professional perspective. If you're a jeweler watching this or a poured producer of silver and gold pieces and you've got thoughts and ideas on that setup on that workstation then you know let me know i'd love to know it'd be really good to hear from you guys if you enjoy the video generally then please make sure that you hit that thumbs up button share it around on your social media as well that would be very helpful for everything that we do here and if you'd like to get future updates when i upload videos make sure you hit that subscribe button as well and we can get uh, a notification for you if you hit that alarm bell Guys, as you can probably tell, I am still gutted about this gold bar, and I just want to finish the video again with another heartfelt apology to uh, the customer, LR103, over on the forum. I'm really sorry that we've messed this up, and thank you once again for putting your faith, and also thank you for being an awesome customer as well, because you were really understanding about this. As disappointing as it was, it's really, really humbling to get that kind of feedback from you, and uh, you're one of the really, really nice customers out there, so thank you really thank you from us to you guys thank you to you for watching if you enjoyed do all of what i've said already but otherwise have a fantastic week ahead and as always please make sure you like share comment and subscribe for more